All right, lads, today I'm going to be talking about the G55S Centauro. This plane was removed from the Gaijin store a few months ago, but with the seven year anniversary of War Thunder, the G55S is one of the planes being brought back for a week. If we look at the post made by Gaijin, we can see that several older premiums are being re released. These vehicles are available to purchase for Golden Eagles from the 1st of November to the 5th of November. One of these is the G55S Centauro, a plane that I am very familiar with. If anyone asked me what was the best way to make Silver Lions, my answer would be the G55S. And this brings me on to the reason for making this video. If you don't have a lot of money, but want a reliable premium for grinding Silver Lions, then I would highly recommend picking up this plane. I can't tell you how much this plane will be sold for, as I do not know, but when it was stored on the store, it used to be around £25. Now £25 is a lot of money, especially if you're a younger player or have other financial commitments. But this is hands down the best money maker in game. The G55S is a rank 4 battle rating 4.7 Italian fighter. The fact this plane is Italian may put some people off, as the Italian tech tree isn't as flushed out as the original 5 nations. And that's a fair enough point. The Italian tech tree however does have some very capable planes, and the G55S being rank 4 means it will allow you to grind all the way up to the early jets. And even if you have no interest in grinding out the Italians, then you still have an incredibly powerful aeroplane for grinding silver lines. Let's talk a bit more about the G55's weapons and performance, we will then look over some gameplay, finally ending with a conclusion. The G55S gets access to three MG151 20mm cannons, the same found on the German fighters of a similar battle rating. Not only do you get the same guns, you also get the same ammunition, particularly the Minger shot round. You get a healthy amount of 650 cannon rounds, which makes them very forgiving for newer players. One cannon is located in the nose, and the other two located one on either wing. These 20mm are probably the best prop cannons in game. They rip for you anything you hit, they are, however, quite slow rounds and require quite a lot more lead than conventional British or American cannon rounds. For secondary weapons, you can carry either two 50kg bombs, two 100kg bombs, or a single torpedo. Carrying secondary weapons are a bit of a meme, but could be useful for getting three silver lines on the Norway map. I will be comparing this plane directly to the British Spitfire F Mark IX at battle rating 4.3. The G55S is powered by the same engine found in the German BF109 G2 series of fighters, the DB605. Having an engine of German pedigree, it performs very well at high altitude. The DB605 engine produces 1280 max horsepower, whereas the Merlin engine in the Spitfire only produces 1270. The G55S is slightly more powerful, but is a bit heavier than the Spitfire, which is reflected in their climb rates, with the G55S climbing at 18.8 meters per second and the Spitfire at 19.5 meters per second. The G55 and Spitfire can both climb well, but neither are designed as high altitude fighters. I'd say both of these planes fall under the designation of medium altitude turn fighters, and turn they both can. The Spitfire has a turn rate of 17.2 seconds, compared to the G55S's 19 seconds flat. This is a clear victory for the Spitfire, but the G55 still outturns the majority of all Allied aircraft. For example, the American P-51 and P-47 have turn rates of 22 seconds and 25 seconds respectively. There is a positive side of the G55S being a bit of a chunky boy, and that is its dive performance. The G55 can easily surpass 840km in a steep dive, and if anyone follows you, you can usually outturn them at the bottom of the dive. The weaknesses of the G55S, and most of the Italian fighters, is their low straight line speed and poor manoeuvring energy retention, especially vertical energy retention. A turn fighter's main defence is its ability to turn, obviously, but if you perform too many flat or vertical manoeuvres, you will lose all your speed, and your turn time will increase dramatically. Getting low and slow in the G55S makes you incredibly vulnerable to boom and zoomers. However, this isn't really a criticism of the G55S specifically. It's more just a trait of turn fighters in general. That being said, here's how I fly the G55. When you spawn into a game, it's worth looking at your teammates to try and determine what BR the game is. 
If I'm in an up tier, I will usually side climb a little bit. But normally I take off and put the plane in around an 18 degree climb straight towards the enemy. When your engine starts to overheat, put it down to 100% power and drop your climb angle to around 15 degrees. You will typically be at around a similar altitude to your opponents. When you first spot an enemy, I suggest levelling out the plane and gaining speed. The next step depends entirely on what the enemy plane is. You can out turn or at least manoeuvre with 90% of the planes you will encounter. If an enemy tries to dive away, you can always follow them with your great dive speed. If you get into a dogfight, try and bring the fight downwards. This allows you to make manoeuvres with your nose pointing down, which means you aren't losing speed when manoeuvring. Let's get into some games and I can put this theory into practice. Alright, we're here in our first game. We've climbed up straight towards the enemy and you can see... Uh, when I when I spotted that P47, I put my nose straight and I got a little bit of air speed. So we are we are slightly lower than the average pilot on the enemy team. But this P47, he's continuing to climb, and he's he's aware of me now. But he's not got the speed to roll out of the way. Now that would have been, if you don't uh, put your nose level and get speed, that's pretty much what will happen to you. So it's always better to level out your plane and pick up some speed before you go into an engagement. So all this video I've been comparing this plane to the Spitfire F Mark 9. And you can see we've got a Spitfire off to our right wing now. And that's going to be the uh, the first engagement I want to show to you. Now I actually make a mistake here. I think the Spitfire is going a lot faster than he actually is. So I do a textbook reversal but he's not going fast enough for him to overshoot. So he's slotted right onto my 6. And in this type of situation the Spitfire is superior. He's got a little bit better roll rate, and he's got a lot better, well, it's not a lot better, but it's significant in this type of close-range knife fighting. Any other plane, apart from maybe a zero, but you, you'll never see a zero. So the Spitfire is probably the most manoeuvrable plane you'll see. But any other plane, British or American, you will pretty much outturn them in this type of situation. Now, I want to slow myself down here while making him speed up. But you can see when he can turn inside me, it's quite hard to do that. But this guy, he's not a stupid player. He obviously knows what he's doing, kind of. But I can, you can see that I'm staying with him, basically. It's a little bit her raising, but it's possible. It's not, it's not impossible to fight Spitfires in this thing. Like I say, I'm starting to slowly get onto his six now. I think I... He's in a slightly better point, but I've got a little bit more knowledge on manoeuvres, I think, here. See that I'm going up. I'm cutting my throttle. I just want to stall myself out so he goes in front of me. And slowly but surely, we are getting there. I'm doing something here which you shouldn't really do in a G55 against a Spitfire, which is doing vertical manoeuvres. I'm going to stall a lot sooner than he is. But maybe he wasn't fully upgraded. Here you can see he almost got on my tail. Keep on putting it vertical. And he actually breaks off here. I'm not sure why he does. Maybe it's, like I say, he wasn't a, a tremendously experienced Spitfire pilot. But it does give him a bit more speed, which is going to help him try and manoeuvre out of our way. And you can see I just cannot match his turn. Especially at this speed. So I put it into the vertical, which slows me down, which means um, I can get behind him. And there, he should have been dead. That's completely my fault. That's going to bite me in the ass. But we've been having a very nice dog fight for about four minutes, I think, maybe. And uh, my team show up. And this is what I really hate about Warfunder in the minute. There's no... You don't really get good dog fights like this. You see him about to get a kill, and my teammate kills him. Not really a criticism of this plane. But you can have really good engagements like that. I really enjoyed that little dogfight. For the next two games, they're both aces. I think on Saturday I recorded this, or a few days ago. And I got two aces in three games, basically. And this was my first game of the day. Got an ace in it. And you can tell it was my first game because I completely missed an easy target there. But we're not going to miss um, a second time. We do get Well, we don't kill him, but we crit him. And we take off his wing there. So that's kill number one. Now we've got a Yak 3 below us, it's the premium uh, French Yak. 
It's very dangerous with his player as an energy fighter, but here he's turning. So, um, makes himself an easy kill, really. Not hard at all, really. But, um, you can outturn turn your axe pretty easily. The Typhoon, however, as you saw from one of the clips, um, as I was going over the performance, Typhoon can be a little bit of an issue. Typhoon is a very good turn, and not many people actually know that. A lot of people think it's a boom and zoomer, but you can turn in it very well. Now here you can see the downside of the G55. He is pulling away from me massively. I would never be able to catch him. If it wasn't for that BF109 forcing him to turn, um, I would have never have even dreamed of actually catching this guy. Now that Typhoon pilot, he should have just done some defensive rolls. And he'd have, he'd have at least tried to outrun the G, uh, the BF109. But instead he does a very, very hard turn, which just kills all his speed. He just makes himself an easy target. Like I said, first um, game of the day, my aim is absolutely dog shit, but we do manage to get the kill. Eventually. That engagement with the Typhoon is quite a good summary of this plane start. If you can get on someone's six and they start manoeuvring, you can stay with them. You're fast enough if an enemies are doing manoeuvres. But another Spitfire, he goes head on. Spitfires, the biggest downside of the Spitfire is its armament. You can see that our single 20mm in the nose, it just went straight to him, just destroyed him. Another example of the great guns, this B25. I'm going to mess up my first shot because, uh, what do you expect? I'm a fucking shit pilot. But uh, 320 mils, just take his wing straight off. That's fifth kill. That ace wasn't really that impressive. Because it was a little bit... I think it was... It wasn't as a stellar. So next game's going to be another ace. I apologise for it being in the dark, but there's nothing much I can do about that. If anything... Well, the first part of this video... The first part of this game, sorry, is going to be more on defensive flying. You can see we just had a P-47 and now a P-51D. These are two of the most common um, American planes you'll see. Now he is a he is in a premium here, so I when I see people in a premium plane, I know I am I know I'm in a premium plane, but I can relax a little bit, especially the P fifty one premium because it's not too great. Then a third player joins. It's the F four U dash four, and we are in a full up tier at five point seven, so it's a little bit um. Your advantages are a little bit negated by... Like, many of these American planes, you can just run away. There's nothing you can do to catch them. But when they choose to engage with you, when they choose to manoeuvre with you, they're pretty much dead. But as you can see, we dodge three different players. What we're going to do now is just extend a little bit. We're going to let the fight come down a bit. And as you can see, the enemies have dropped altitude. This is perfect for us. They can't really run away because we can follow them in the dive. We've got a lot of juicy targets manoeuvring down below. Now, I choose this Spitfire because he's probably my biggest rival. He's the one that can out he's the only one really that can out turn me. You can see our dive speed, we're completely gaining on him. And he's straight away dead. And this this match is a little bit of a clusterfuck because I look to my behind me, there's the entire enemy team. So the F4U 4B. I always hated the name of this point, it's a tongue twister in your mouth. But he's dead. Premium Spitfire. Same as the F4UB, he's a 5.7 BR. And a premium. And he doesn't really know what he's doing. And he's dead. And we've got two P47Ns. Now, apart from my awful aim here, the P47s are doing the right thing. The, the minute, well, they're not minute, that. They're doing the right thing by not manoeuvring. They're just running, keeping the nose down. You can see that they're actually... Um, While well, the other P-47 is pulling away. This guy, because he was rolling left to right. He, um, but even now, you can see he's pulling away from me massively. So the way to beat this plane is speed, really. But he stays in the same place for too long and kill him. Now, I wouldn't have shown this clip if it wasn't for this last kill. This P-47M, he's coming in with a lot more speed than me. Now the mistake I made with the Spitfire of the first clip where I, he was going too slow to overshoot. He's not going uh, slow. He's going very, very fast. But 
he makes a mistake, goes straight into the vertical. P-47s, they're very, very heavy. They're not vertical fighters. And you can see here, I'm actually using negative um, elevator. I want to stay in the air for as long as possible. I want him to stall out before me. And again, it's another American premium. And American premium players, even American teams mainly, they're not too great. So all he had to do here, he just had to put his nose down and run away. And I would have been unable to do anything to him. But he's continuing to turn. Now I'm just turning completely inside of him. Again, my poor aim as always. It's not going to matter though when he completely bleeds all his speed. I'd be so much better at making videos if I could actually aim. It'd be so much nicer. But we eventually get the job done. That's another ace. I think these few gameplays did quite a good job at explaining um, how to fly this thing. We're going to go on to our conclusion. To conclude, I think the G55S is well worth purchasing. It combines excellent weapons with exceptional dive and turn characteristics. Even the quote unquote negatives of this plane, such as low top speed and poor energy retention, can be negated by climbing properly and pilot discipline. I personally have played 96 games in this plane, winning 74 of them, a 77% win ratio. In those 96 games, I've died 50 times, but I've killed 183 other players nearly a 4 to 1 death ratio. This plane will only be available from the 1st of November to the 5th of November. If I could only have one premium on my account, I would choose this plane. This plane is great fun to fly, you get a lot of kills and you make a lot of silver lions. I hope you found this useful video and thank you very much for watching.